Many model railroaders do not really enjoy dealing with electronics and therefore may hesitate to build their own command station. But as demonstrated in the last video, using the Arduino controller and some additional boards, it is really something that everybody can do. In this video, I am going to show you some tips and tricks that help you to make your DIY build a success. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. A special welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I'm happy you made it here. Building a command station consists of three phases. Buying the components, building the hardware and loading the software. Here are the components you need to buy for your build. An Arduino board, either Arduino Uno or Arduino Mega, a DCC AUX shield to simplify the wiring, a motor shield to power the track, and a DC power supply with the track voltage needed for your modeling scale. Good choices are 12 volts for N scale and 16 volts for HO scale. With these components you can build a simple command station with 2 amps track current, a programming track and connection to a computer via USB that allows you to control the trains. If you want to have Wi-Fi access so you can use the smartphone and go without the computer, you can add an IoTT stick to the hardware list. I put some links for all the hardware components in the description below. Assembling the hardware boards really is as simple as clicking together some Lego bricks. The only thing I recommend before stacking the boards is doing a quick test to make sure the boards are working. Start with the Arduino itself. The simple test you can do is connecting it via USB port to your computer. If successful, there are two things that should happen. First, you should hear the Windows notification for a new USB connection. This tells you that your computer has recognized the board and that the communication link has been established. If you don't hear the notification, you may need to update the driver or possibly the hardware is not working. I recently had this problem with the SunFounder Arduino Mega I bought from Amazon, which apparently had a dead USB port. I simply returned it and got a properly working replacement within a few days. The second thing to observe is the onboard LEDs on the Arduino. If everything is ok, the power LED will be on permanently and a second LED will be blinking with a clock rate of about 500 milliseconds. This indicates that the Arduino gets the power and that it runs the blink sketch which is preloaded on most commercial boards. Next is the motor shield. There is nothing that can easily be tested up front, so we just install it. First, we orient the shield so that the pinout matches the pins of the Arduino. On the Arduino Uno, this is a no-brainer as there is only one way to do it. On the Mega, that is the case as well, but it is slightly more complicated as the Mega has more pins than needed. To line it up, make sure that the power connectors of both boards are oriented to the left, then place the motor shield in the most left position possible. Sometimes it is a little tricky to insert all the pins into the holes at the same time. So here is a little trick to make it easy. I slightly bend the pins of the upper board towards the inside by pressing the board against a table. Just slightly so that the distance between the rows is maybe one tenth of a millimeter less than the distance between the openings of the lower board. This has two effects. First, it aligns all pins to form a straight row. And second, when installed, the pins will apply a small force against the contacts of the lower board, which will help to maintain secure electrical contact. In fact, I recently bought a very cheap Arduino Mega from AliExpress and apparently the contact openings were too large so that some pins of the upper board 
did not make contact to the Arduino. Adjusting them slightly towards the inside as described fixed the problem. Now you can insert the pins on the remote side first, then pull the top of the board slightly towards you and insert the pins on the near side. Then press the board down until it sits firmly on the lower board. Do a visual inspection of all pins to make sure they are all inserted in the correct hole and no pin is bent out. You may also want to connect the track wires to output ports A and B of the motor shield. When using the standard configuration, port A is for the main track and port B is for the decoder programming. Next, we install the DCC AUX board. This board can be tested prior to installation by powering it with a DC supply of 10 volts or higher. Simply connect it using the barrel connector and as a result, both LEDs on the board should come on immediately. As an additional test, you can measure the voltage between the two outmost pins of the IoT stick connector, which should be between 5.15 and 5.25 volts. Now you can place the DCC AUX shield on top of the motor shield and connect the USB port. The Arduino should start up as before and the LEDs on the DCC AUX shield should be on, indicating that the V-in connection between the shield and the Arduino board is working properly. As an additional test, you can again measure the voltage between the outmost pins of the IoT stick connector and this time you should get a voltage between 4.8 and 5 volts. If it is lower than that, this indicates that the 5 volt pin is not making contact as it should. If all this is successful, your hardware is complete and working. The simplest way to install the software really is using the installer program provided by DCCX. I showed that in the last video, so I'm simply going to play that short clip again. Next, install the DCCX software on your Arduino. For this simple and standardized setup, you can use the installer program provided on the DCCX webpage. Select Arduino Motor Shield as your motor driver and install the software. After installation of the software, you can verify that it works. The simplest way to do that is using the DCCX Web Throttle software. Go to the DCCX Web Throttle page and click the Run it from the cloud option. Make sure the command station is connected via USB and then click the Connect DCCX button. You get a list of available USB ports from which you can select the one for the command station. If the connection is successful, you will see a series of commands going through the log window at the bottom of the web throttle page. This shows you that the command station software is working and communicating. You now can click on the power button and you will see the four LEDs on the motor shield come on. Click again and they go off. So it looks like everything works and we can go for the real thing. Connect the track output of the motor shield to the track and place a locomotive on the rails. Keep the Arduino connected to the USB port but also connect the DC power supply to the barrel jack of the DCC AUX shield. Click the power button on the web throttle and the LEDs on the motor shield will come on again, but brighter this time as the voltage is higher. Now enter the address of the locomotive decoder and use the slider to make it move. That's it, your command station is working.
If you want to use your smartphone to run your trains, remove the power and USB connections so that the stack is unpowered. Then add an IoT stick to the DCC aux board and connect power again. The stick will start up automatically and connect to your Wi-Fi network. You now can open the stick configuration page in the browser and select Loconet Loopback as command source and Red Hat Shield as head device. Then activate the Wi server and in case you want to use JMRI or other software, the Loconet over TCP server as well. The web throttle unfortunately does not work via Wi Fi at this time. Also, in this configuration, the USB port is not available as it is used for the communication between the IoT stick and the Arduino board. You can now open the Engine Driver app on your Droid phone or Wi Throttle on your iPhone and you can connect to the IoT stick which should be listed in the Available Connection section of the app. You then can assign a locomotive and use the slider and buttons on the app to control speed, direction and functions. Of course there is much more you can do when adding the IoT stick but this is material for future videos. For today, that's it. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you are now eager to build your own DIY command station. It's really not that hard and absolutely worth trying even if you do not have a lot of experience with electronics. Please send me pictures of your successful build or bring up your questions in the comment section of this video if you run into problems. In the meantime, please click the like button below. Every click helps to promote this video and the IoTT channel in general because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.